Hello, and welcome to today's, today's live, today's video. So today we're talking about adrenal fatigue and, and working out, whether it's a good idea, whether it's dangerous, and when it's actually appropriate, when it can actually be very, very helpful. So this is one of these, those topics where the devil is really in the detail. You have to be really careful about the way that you're going about this. Like, let's say, for example, working out can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people depending on, on where they're currently at. And that's what's really important here. It's about understanding where you are and what's appropriate for, for where you're currently at. So I'm just going to open this on my, on my phone. So if you have any questions while I'm doing this, please let me know. If you're watching this on YouTube afterwards, I do these live on my Facebook every couple of days. So maybe consider coming and adding me on my, on my Facebook, come and join me, ask me, ask me questions live and get, get better results. So I'm just gonna open this, should be pretty simple. Okay, so if you have questions, let me know. Let me know, do you think you have adrenal fatigue? And if you, if you do, whether it's been diagnosed or not, you don't, honestly, you don't need a diagnosis to know if you have adrenal fatigue. You can really, really base this on your, on your symptoms and you can look at the stages. So adrenal fatigue is really characterized by four stages, stage one, two, three, and four. Stage one being the least bad, stage four being the worst, really bad. So the reason that I have the authority to talk about this is I've been at stage four adrenal fatigue. I have had severely debilitating fatigue and I also had this in combination with chronic fatigue syndrome. So I've really been at that place where I was I was completely bedridden, I was debilitated, I could not function. I had a full-time carer, I was on disability. I was really, really ill. And I've made it back to, I'm now at the point where I'm at, sta I'm at stage one now, and I'm progressing from stage one to not having adrenal fatigue anymore. So that's why I, I wanted to, to make this video, because I've, I've come through all these stages, you know? I know these stages intricately because I've been through them myself. And I've learned a lot of good things and bad things, things to avoid, things to do on the way. And I want to share them with you today. So let's get started. Working out on adrenal fatigue. I'm gonna say, generally, if you're at stage three or stage four, it's just like a flat out no. Stage four, you're, you're probably not even able to get out of bed. You're probably not even able to function like on a daily basis. You, you probably can't work. Wouldn't be able to do any like physical labor. You probably have very low levels of strength. You probably really just struggle to get through the day. Exercising, you're probably not even thinking about exercising if you're, if you're at stage four. It's probably not even on your radar. And that's with a good reason. You, you don't wanna be doing that at all. When you start moving to stage three, I'd still discourage exercise. So at this point, you're, really what happens in adrenal fatigue is you're, you're draining your body faster than it's being replenished. And if you're at stage three, you're still probably draining it faster than it's replenishing. You're, you're stuck in this limbo where you're still not replenishing your body fast enough. So at this stage, instead of focusing on doing things like exercise, which have a, they can have benefits, but at this stage, it's more taxative than beneficial. I, I, I would discourage it. At this stage, like maybe gentle walks, you know, walking at a very slow pace, not inducing a, like an increased heart rate, not feeling any muscle soreness at all. Just very gentle, purely aerobic. You probably wouldn't even consider it exercise, just gentle, gentle walking. When we start to get to stage two, we have a little bit more wiggle room. So at this point, the more debilitating symptoms are probably not so debilitating anymore. There's, you're probably able to get through the day and you just feel a little bit tired or you feel considerably tired. You might get muscle soreness after just doing normal things, you know, just cooking in your kitchen or bringing the, bringing the groceries in. Might be enough to give you like uh, muscle fatigue. You might still be having what I call the, the dreaded double cortisol spike so it's like your, your cortisol rhythm is supposed to happen when you have a big spike first thing in the morning and then you're not supposed to have another spike throughout the day but if you're still at this stage where you're, you're at stage two you're probably still having two spikes in a day so you have one spike first thing in the morning that's what gives you energy when you get up and then you probably crash around like two or three o'clock and then that's the sort of time where you you feel like you want to have a nap or you feel like you're craving carbs or like coffee or coke or something like that and then you have a second spike and you feel re-energized. And if you're in stage stage three, this second spike's probably happening like seven or eight o'clock. If you're in stage two, this is probably more likely happening like three or four o'clock in the afternoon. You get that second spike of energy. At this, at this stage, you wanna be really careful with, with your exercise. I would probably use it, I'd probably try to use your first morning cortisol spike to, to do this. So I'd probably try and use an AM AM type of workout and I probably wouldn't even still call it a workout you know at this point we're talking like more vigorous stretching things like yoga maybe going for a slightly faster paced walk 
not, not still not taxing yourself too much. At this stage, you still really want to be gentle because your batteries are still kind of depleted. We're still focused on, on, on replenishing. That's the most important thing at this stage. So at, at, at this point, like gentle yoga is probably the, the furthest extent that I would go and like stretching. I wouldn't be like following a, any, any type of workout either, like of, of any sort, like no cardio, no high intensity workouts, no weightlifting. I wouldn't do any of that just yet. I would still wait to help your body replenish itself properly. When we get to stage one, so at this point, you're probably like on a day when you have a lot of stress, you might still have that second spike. So you have that slump in the afternoon, but then you, you bounce back up quite quickly, or you might not be having any second spike at all. You might be producing enough cortisol in the morning to, to give you steady energy throughout the day. And you're not having the second spike anymore. That's a really good sign that you're in the right place to start exercising. What's probably gonna happen is when you do exercise on the day that you exercise, like for me today, I just had a workout this morning. On this day, you're gonna deplete that first morning cortisol spike very rapidly because you have you, you do a workout so on these days in this in at, at this stage it's quite likely that when you have a workout you will get the second spike so this is where we need to be mindful we need to talk about pacing so i've got i've got here we've got frequency let's talk at this point so you want to make sure that you're you're working out in a way that is that feels good to you that obviously working out feels feels nice if you're doing the right kind of workout you're doing something you're interested in you want it to feel good but you don't want to be pushing yourself so far that it's, it's, it, it makes your symptoms worse. So this little second spike is okay. You don't want this to be causing like insomnia. You don't want this to be, if you have these, this, this second spike and your stress hormones are really elevated throughout the day and it gets to the point where you're trying to sleep and your nervous system cannot calm itself down, you pushed too far. You've produced, you've made your, you've stimulated your body to produce too many stress hormones. And it, it's, this is not beneficial because now you're not going to sleep properly. Not sleeping is absolutely the worst thing you can do for adrenal fatigue. So if you push yourself so far that it negatively affects your sleep, you went way too far. You need to dial it back a, 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 a massive amount. So that, that really ties in nicely to this, this food and rest concept. So I've, I've never seen somebody recover from adrenal fatigue. And so as I said, I'm, I'm doing, I've nearly done this myself. I've helped like hundreds of other people do this. I have universally never seen it happen in a, a sleep deficit and in a calorie deficit. It just doesn't happen, right? Your body is depleted. If you're not providing it the things that it needs to replenish itself, it just cannot recover. And the fact that you got to a place where you had adrenal fatigue in the first place means you were taking more from your body than you were giving it. So at, at this stage, we really, I, I would really not be using like any kind of calorie restriction and I would not be limiting rest like at all if you need to have a nap in the day absolutely have a nap it's one of the most important things you can do if it gets to the point so i'm, I'm training with my with my partner joanna and she had a workout and then she had to sleep for six hours after that that workout that is a good indicator that that was that was too intense you know not so intense that she couldn't sleep so that's that's quite a good thing she's got a good sensitivity to these stress hormones was able to turn it off quite well but then needing that sleep of six hours after working out that, that that's not good right she did sleep another full night afterwards, so that, that's good. It means her hormones are doing, they're doing quite well, but it just means it was a little bit too much too soon. But it's really good that she was able to give herself that rest. If your body's asking for rest, you have to give it the rest. If your body's asking for food, you have to give it the food. I know that you might be getting into this, especially with associated things of adrenal fatigue, like excess weight gain and things like that. I, I guarantee you, if you try to restrict through this process of moving out of adrenal fatigue, if you try to restrict, not only will you you actually exacerbate this and actually have an onset of adrenal fatigue. You'll, you'll basically regress back into stage two and you'll develop all of the symptoms again. You will not lose weight. Your, bo your body just will not. You, your metabolism will freeze. Your body will not feel safe expending energy. At this stage, your body needs to be replenished. We can talk about like calorie deficits and weight loss and stuff like that after the health problems are out of the way. You know, this is really important. And if you get to the point where you're able to start working out properly because you, you you've replenished your body weight loss is going to be so much easier because once you have more muscle mass your basic metabolic rate comes up anyway so you're going to be able to tolerate that food better but we we really want to be working with the body here and depriving is a, a massive no at this step it's it's just going to make your workouts really awful it's going to make everything go backwards but definitely would not do it would not restrict at this stage 
Something that's also been really helpful for me is to use an adaptogen. So I'm really of the mindset that you don't need supplements to heal. You absolutely do not. The core of what you're doing is going to be like dietary, alternative therapies, um, your sleep, looking after your hormones, things like that. That is, that is the foundation. That's the 80% of your healing. But when you're in this stage, especially if you're, you're at stage one and you're trying to break out of adrenal fatigue, you're trying to break that cycle, using an adaptogen can be really helpful because in these stages of moving out of, so when, you're, when you have adrenal fatigue, you kind of will have a mindset of like, I need to conserve my energy, I need to be careful, my body isn't strong, my body isn't resilient, it's a bit fragile, it's a bit delicate. And breaking through from stage one to not having it anymore requires a mindset shift of I am durable, I am resilient, I am strong. But you also have to have the compassion to understand that while you do have this strength now, you have this resiliency, this came because you really took care of yourself. So you need to continue taking care of yourself like this. We've got a, we've got a question here from, from, from Georgie Porgy. She says, how do you know what, which stage of adrenal fatigue you're at? I'll cover that in just a second. I'll just, just cover this adapt, adaptogen topic. So adaptogens, what is it? So it's a type of supplement that you can take. You can either get it in like a little pill, you can get it in a tincture, or the way that, is, that I would say is best to do, you can get it as like a, as a powder. So there's different types of adaptogens. You're gonna to have to try and find one that works for you. So the one that works really nicely for me is ashwagandha. There's other things like holy basil. Um, there's, there's, there's loads, you know, there's like five or six really good, very well-known adaptogens. You can literally just go on Google, type adaptogenic herbs, and you'll just get a list of them. So try one, flex your intuition, see which one you feel pulled towards. I've used ashwagandha for a long, a long time ago. Then I realized I had histamine intolerance. This one's slightly higher in histamine. Resolved my histamine intolerance, fix that. Don't have histamine intolerance anymore. I can do ashwagandha and it, it really helps me. You know, it makes me feel really strong. It really helps my body adapt in this, in this stress. And for this first month or so into training, I'm gonna. I'm using an adaptogen quite heavily because I'm breaking through from this mindset and this behavior of like I'm fragile I'm delicate I need to take care of myself I'm really I'm, I'm really like vulnerable still to actually I'm really resilient now I'm really strong I can push myself and my body is strong enough to be able to to handle it like my mind breaks before my body you know I can really push myself really hard so adaptogens are really nice because they help to modulate your stress response if you're feeling like anxious nervous it helps to bring that down. If you're feeling low energy or like lethargic, it helps to bring your energy levels up. So it's like wherever you're at, what like the word adaptogen means that they, they, they change how they work based on the need of the individual. So an adaptogen is like a universally useful thing that you can use at stage four, stage three, stage two, stage one. It can be really helpful. I didn't use it. You do not need it. It is not essential. But when you're trying to break out, it can be really, really helpful. And if you tolerate it and you've got the money and you want to try something, an adaptogen is a really good, useful, quite versatile supplement. So you could, you could give that a try. So Georgie Porgy says, how do you know what stage of adrenal fatigue you're at? So I would, you could either use, you could use functional testing. So the best type of functional testing that you could use for this would be a four point saliva causal test. So it's like you take measurements of your, of your saliva four times in a day, and then they graph this. I've got, a, I'm actually, so I'm gonna, down here we've got a workshop about stage three and stage two. We're gonna be really covering this in detail. I'm actually gonna have examples of what stage three adrenal fatigue looks like, what stage two adrenal fatigue looks like, like actually of, of these saliva cortisol tests. So you can see what this would look like on a, on a test. But the thing that's really cool, and this is something that I've, I've really discovered through working with, with many of my clients that have done this test is there's a very, specific bracket of symptoms that is appropriate for different stages of adrenal fatigue. So I can usually, so say for example, I'm working with somebody, they think they have adrenal fatigue, they're working with a doctor, they're gonna get the test done. I can usually predict with about 80, 90% accuracy, what stage they're at based on just their symptoms alone. So if you're interested in trying to figure out what stage you're at, I'd definitely come to the workshop because we're gonna cover all of the four stages, four, three, two, one, how to identify which stage you're at based on the symptoms that you currently have. If you're interested in finding out more about the workshop, just make sure that you're on my email list. I'm gonna send a, an email out very shortly that's gonna send you a, an invitation. And you'll know if you're on my email list because you get, you get emails from me. If you're not receiving emails from me, you're probably not on my list. And just let me know and I can send you a link to, to sign up. So that's gonna be like a, a like sort of like a live in-person, live in-person but not in-person, like digital event where you can, you can ask me questions and 
I'm gonna go through and teach it like a class, you know? So you're actually gonna be there, it's gonna be on Zoom. You can ask me questions as we go through. So you, I can say like this, this, and this, and this, and this is characteristic of stage three. And you can say, okay, well, I've got this, this, I don't have this and this, but I have this as well. Like, what do you think that means? And I can help you figure out like what that means and what stage it fits in and, and, and what you can do to, to help yourself with that. So the workshop is primarily gonna be, so I'm gonna cover all of these four, four different stages stage one, uh, four, three, two, one. But the, the workshop is primarily focused on helping people who are in stage three and stage two move to stage one. So it's gonna be like how, if you're in stage three, how to get into stage two. And if you're in stage two, how to get to stage one. That's what I'm gonna be covering in the workshop. So this was really more focused on don't work out if you're in stage four, three, and two. If you're in stage one, it's okay. Here's a good idea of, of, of what you wanna be doing. But in the workshop, I'm gonna be talking more about how to identify if you're in stage four, three, two, one. And then from there, I'm gonna say straight away, if you're in stage four, get some personalized help. You know, you really need some one-to-one -one support. I can help you with that, work with a doctor, do, do something, you know. A course isn't gonna be enough. You really need someone's help at, at that point. But from stage three to two to one, it's, it's quite, it's quite, there's quite some, some very universally applicable things, like make sure you're eating enough, make sure you're resting. We're gonna talk about how to actually do this, you know, because it's all well and good to say, Oh yeah, you would need to eat well. It's like, okay, well, what the hell does that mean? Because that's different for everyone. But there's some general, there's a general rule of thumb of, of what that actually looks like. Oh yeah, I know I need to sleep really well, but I have insomnia. So it's like, oh, well, that, that's a problem. So what can we do to improve your sleep? You know, so we're gonna be talking about like sleep hacks, dietary modifications, what we can do to support you through, through this process to get you to the point where you're at stage one. And then we can start working out and you can start like living the life that you, that you wanna have. So, that's everything from today's video. If you have any questions, please let me know. And if you're gonna to come to this workshop, leave me, a little, leave me a little comment below. Let me know if you need to be signed up to the email list and I'll get you signed up. Let me know if you're already signed up and you're coming. It'll be really helpful to have a good idea of how many people are coming because I can only, I can only fit so many people in the class because otherwise it gets a bit chaotic. So if you're interested in coming to that, please let me know. So yeah, everything for today. Let me know if you have adrenal fatigue. Let me know if you're coming to the class. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, yeah, have a lovely day. Ciao.